Good day and welcome to yet another Funky Daily Devotional. Today's verse of the day is Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And that's Joshua 1, verse 9. Today's message is titled, Let the Revelation Begin. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of truth. 1 Timothy 2, 3-4 People go to great lengths trying to wring knowledge from God and when all they need to do is go to the Bible. God's not holding himself back from anyone. It's his will for every man and woman to walk in revelation of him. Well now, brother, you might say, God's not going to give all these sinners out here a revelation. Really? Why do you think he sends evangelists to preach to them? Why do you think he sent his word to reveal the truth? So, if you want to know that truth, just open the book and read it. All of it. Not just parts that are in red. Those aren't the only parts Jesus said. He said everything in Genesis. He said everything in Exodus. He said everything in Numbers. He said everything in Deuteronomy. He said everything in Leviticus. He said everything in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He said everything in Romans. He said everything in the book. He is the Word. In fact, if you'll read Galatians 3, you'll discover that every promise made to Abraham was for Jesus. It was the promises that enabled him to heal and deliver people. He didn't minister by some special power. No one else could have. He based his ministry on the revelations he'd received through faith in the written word of God. When the devil came to tempt him, he didn't fight him off with a special legion of angels who'd been assigned to protect him because he was God's son. He fought him off with the phrase, it is written. God has equipped you to do the same. He's given you that written word, and he's given you his Holy Spirit to help you understand it. He's more than ready to give you the knowledge you need. You don't have to wring it out of him. He just opened the book and let the revelation begin. Scripture reading is John 16, 7 through 15. John 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is your advantage that I go away for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they did not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. John sixteen seven to 15, verse 7. I'll read commentations. All right. Jesus did what he came to do. There would be no good news. If he did not die, he could not remove our sins. He could not rise again and defeat death. If he did not go back to the Father, the Holy Spirit would not come. Christ's presence on earth was limited to one place at a time. His thing meant he could be present to the whole world through the Holy Spirit. Three important tasks of the Holy Spirit are, one, convicting the world of its sin and calling it to repentance. Two, revealing the standard of God's righteousness to anyone who believes because Christ would no longer be physically present on earth. And three, demonstrating Christ's judgment over Satan. According to Jesus, not believing in him is a sin. Christ's death on the cross made a personal relationship with God available to us. When we confess our sin, God declares us righteous and delivers us from judgment for our sins. The truth is which the Holy Spirit guides us into truth about Christ. The Spirit also helps us through patient practice to discern right from wrong. Jesus said the Holy Spirit would tell them about the future, the nature of their mission, the opposition that they would face, and the final outcome of their efforts. They didn't fully understand these promises until the Holy Spirit came after Jesus' death and resurrection. 
Then the Holy Spirit revealed the truths to the disciples as they wrote them down in the books that now form the New Testament. Jesus was referring to his death now only a few hours away and his resurrection three days later. The footnotes here, it says 16.7, or comforter, or encourager, or counselor, Greek reads paraclete. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that you come in all spirit and in all truth, that you have formed all the world and everything that we know through you and by you, Father, and that all that you have, you've given to us, everything that we have was yours. And thank you, Father, that, that you are judge and ruler, that you are a righteous judge and ruler, and by your grace and by your kindness and by the acceptance and washing of the blood of Jesus, all that is wiped away by the fire of the Holy Spirit, all of that is burnt away, leaving only what is holy, what is pure, and what is good, even if it is by the skin of our teeth. But we don't want to enter heaven through the skin of our teeth, God. We want to enter heaven in the fullness and the richness and the goodness and the glory of the Heavenly Father, that there be huge storehouses and huge ripening of fields, Heavenly Father, harvest with much grain stored in heaven for eternity, as opposed to what is temporary here on earth. And by that, I'm, I'm speaking of the salvation of huge crops of people, Heavenly Father, coming to the salvation glory of Jesus Christ into all eternity with him and not perishing away into the bowels and the pits of hell, Heavenly Father, into the fiery doom, Mount Doom. God, we just love you. We worship you. We need you more and more each and every day. Thank you, Father, that you send warring guardian angels to go before us and protect us, to reveal your truth by the only way of the Holy Spirit. And I pray, God, that you would open up the minds and the hearts and the eyes and the ears of people that are listening, Father, by way of the Holy Spirit, to hear your truth, that your truth would stand out to them, Father. And I'll just read this again. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. And that's 1 Timothy 2, 3 to 4. And we pray this in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. We pray. Amen. Shalom and shalom and God bless and keep you.